Hi everyone, Ian here from the Media Center, and in today's video, I'll be showing you how to set up our cinema hot lights and covering their health and safety requirements. Cinema hot lights use a tungsten bulb and produce a near perfect color output, meaning that they're excellent at reproducing vibrant, saturated, and true to life colors. This is why tungsten lights were originally used during the early days of cinema and became the standard moving forward. Although similar to a household tungsten, cinema tungstens use a stronger glass and they rely on pressurized halogen inside the bulb which helps heat the filament, resulting in a higher temperature being created, allowing for greater luminosity and a stronger color rendition. This is important because if we use poor quality light, this will result in dull colors and unpleasant color casts, which can be especially noticeable on skin tones. This is most apparent on cheaper LEDs, fluorescence, and household bulbs. When rigging cinema lights, regardless of whether they're LED or tungsten, safety is paramount. So ensure the following steps are implemented. Be sure to carry out a detailed risk assessment and location recce to ascertain power outlets and have floor plans so you can map out the most appropriate areas for the lights to be placed. Set up the lights with a wide base and add sandbags as this provides stronger rigidity. The higher the stand is raised, the wider its base needs to be. In addition, position one of the light stand legs toward your talent to reduce the risk of the light falling toward them. If your lights are mains wired, check all cables are in good condition with no cuts or tears to the insulation, as this could reveal live wiring. Ensure any excess cable which is not in use is uncoiled and neatly placed next to the light stand base. With tungstens, it's important to ensure cables are uncoiled to avoid overheating potentially occurring. As an additional safety measure, it's also useful to run the power cable under one of the light stand legs. This means if the light is accidentally tugged, it won't pull the top of the light, it will drag it from the bottom. When positioning cables, tape them down and route them away from where the main action is gonna take place. For sensitive surfaces, I normally use adhesives such as hazard tape and frog tape. And for other surfaces, gaffer tape can also be used but do remember gaffer tape could leave unwanted residue. Before turning on a hot light, make sure connection points are secure on the light fixing and that no cracks have occurred in the tungsten bulbs. Furthermore, allow the lights to adjust to temperature changes when moving across different locations. For example, moving from a cold to warm environment. This helps ensure the glass won't become weak and crack. If any lights do crack or blow, switch them off immediately at their main power source. When using any type of hot light, gloves are essential at all times, as you can easily sustain third degree burns if this is not adhered to. Furthermore, whenever a light is turned on, be sure to make others around you aware. A common phrase to say is striking. Also ensure others are not looking directly into the source as this could damage your vision. When altering a light on set, also use correct terminology so the whole crew will be able to react and coordinate appropriately. This would normally be something like pan, tilt, and stick up and stick down. Stick means you're bringing the light higher or lower. And whenever you're changing the stick, make sure to have one hand pre-positioned on the riser so the light doesn't suddenly drop. Finally, before you pack any form of hot light down into its carry case, leave time for it to cool. This is obviously to reduce the risk of burns to yourself and damage to the carry case. In the super kit bag, you'll have four lights, one 300 watt, two 650 watts, and an 800 watt. In addition, you'll also have barn doors attached to the light, four light stands, a pair of gloves, and an assortment of gels held via pegs for either reducing the light output, such as NDs and diffusions, and a range of CTB and CTO sheets for adjusting color temperature. To begin with, lengthen the central column to your chosen height and attach the light via its mounting point, checking that it's fully connected and locked into position. At the front of each light lies their barn door, 
and these are used for shaping light and narrowing or widening the field of view by adjusting the individual panes, like so. They attach via an inner diameter ring which slots into three metal holders, positioned at the front of the light. To hold them in place, a spring-loaded clip is provided, and once in position, they can rotate 360 degrees and are the mounting point for gels, NDs, and diffusion sheets. When attaching anything of this nature, always make sure they're fireproof and designed specifically for cinema lights. But rest assured, this is the case for all the gels we provide. In addition, the Aries also provide a spot and flood mechanism located either at the back or base of the light source. The spot function focuses the light source into a narrower field of projection, and this will produce a more powerful beam, but it may create a hot spot, i.e. a central point which is stronger and brighter than the outer edges. By contrast, the flood widens the projection angle and spreads out the light more evenly. Now straight out of the box, this type of setup will create a harsh light source, meaning shadows will have a sharp line to them. And that's because there's no barrier between the bulb and the subject. To create soft light, a softbox can be used. Softboxes produce diffusion and wrap the light around the subject to greater effect, providing a more gradual transition from the brighter areas to the shadows. The bigger the light and softbox are, and closer the light is to the subject, the softer the light distribution and wrap will be. By wrap, we mean how defined is the shadow on the talent and the area behind them. The silver reflective material within the softbox also allows a more even distribution of the light, and this helps to further reduce the hotspots. To rig a softbox, place the metal rods into their dedicated fabric holders and attach each rod to the mounting ring. You'll need to bend the rods a little, which will create tension, but don't worry, they're designed to do this. Once the initial structure has been formed, Velcro the diffusion sheets to the front of the softbox and attach the mounting ring in the same way you would the barn doors. Do note, you can't attach both the barn doors and softbox at the same time, it's one or the other. Finally, attach the additional piece of fabric to the rear of the softbox as this helps minimize light leakage. As you can see, the difference between using and not using a softbox is quite apparent. We can either create soft light or harsh light. Now, when creating any type of light setup, color temperature is paramount. The primary rule of good lighting is that all light sources should be motivated and in the first instance should aim to replicate a sense of reality. Although color temperatures can be mixed, and this is often the case to present a certain style or mood, there should always be a primary temperature. Every light source, and by light source, I mean anything which emits light, so a bulb or the sun, has a color temperature. The color temperature is measured on the Kelvin scale, and to get the correct Kelvin value, you need to perform a white balance in camera, which will match the camera's Kelvin value to the environment's Kelvin value. This allows the camera to reproduce an accurate representation of white and neutral gray. And this is why it's called a white or gray balance. If these tones are accurately set, then all additional colors will also appear correct. Now, different environments and light sources will vary dramatically in terms of their Kelvin range. Our tungsten lights are fixed at 3200. However, if we were shooting outside, this wouldn't match the midday sun's color temperature of 5600. Now, with bicolor LEDs, such as the Filoni panels, we can adjust the color temperature with a built-in dial. But with hot lights, there's no option for this. So instead, we need to use gels to alter the Kelvin range of the light. And these are known as CTB and CTO. CTB stands for color temperature blue. And these are just a warmer value to a cooler value. CTO stands for color temperature orange, and these do the opposite. They make a light source warmer. Remember, 1800 on the Kelvin scale produces a very warm orange hue. And moving up to 10,000 creates a very cool blue hue. 
If the 3200 Kelvin light moves closer to 10,000, it will become cooler. And if it moves closer to 1800, it will become warmer. Now on attaching gels, wear gloves and ensure the light is turned off to protect your eyes from the direct beam. Don't let the gels get too close and or touch the glass as this could burn them. These sheets come in different strengths and the greater the intensity, the more it will alter the color temperature. In our super kit, we have three different strengths, a quarter, half, and full. These are just the Kelvin range in the following ways. A 3200 tungsten light with a quarter CTB, so color temperature blue attached, creates approximately a 3600 Kelvin range. Remember, this is because a CTB gel is making the light source cooler, and 3600 is cooler than 3200 as it's closer to 10,000. Following this, a half CTB turns the 3200 Kelvin into a 4200 Kelvin source, and a full CTB makes it around 5600. So each time we're adding a greater gel intensity, it's making the light appear cooler. In contrast, if I were to attach a CTO, so color temperature orange, to an already warm tungsten light, a quarter CTO would turn the 3200 Kelvin into a warmer 2600 Kelvin. A half would make it around 2300, and a full would turn it to about 2100 Kelvin. It's important to remember that when using CTO and CTB gels, you should always perform a camera white balance with the color temperature you'll be recording in, i.e. perform a white balance after the lights have been adjusted and the gels have been attached. This means the camera will correctly reference white under the color temperature you've set up. In addition to CTOs and CTBs, we also provide ND gels and diffusers in the super kit bag, and you can book out RGB gels separately. NDs reduce the light output without altering the color temperature, just like NDs in a camera, and diffusion sheets perform the same action as a softbox, but to a lesser effect. Finally, RGB gels allow us to create more stylistic effects with theatrical color when required. Of course, there's always exceptions to these rules regarding how you can use gels and how you can use color temperatures. But when first getting to grips with lighting, it's best to become technically sound with the basics, which is what we've covered in this video. Finally, if a ball blows, cracks, or begins to smoke, make sure to turn the light off as quickly as possible and allow it to cool down before attempting to remove anything. If you have a spare bulb available, this can be changed in the following way. On the 300 and 650 watt, the outer shell has a locking clasp on top. This needs to be pinched, pulled to the side and lifted up to reveal the bulb. Pulling the bulb out will reveal two metal prongs which hold the bulb in place. And this connects to the corresponding connection points. Simply place the new bulb into the same location and ensure it's sitting as vertically straight as possible. For the 800 watt light, you'll need to unscrew the front mesh grid to access the bulb. However, do be aware that we don't supply additional bulbs in the kit bags. So with the ease of use from bicolor LEDs, what are some of the advantages and disadvantages of hot lights? Well, tungstens produce a beautiful light source, which creates a near perfect color rendition and many filmmakers still feel they produce a more organic image than that which comes from LEDs or fluorescence. Tungstens are also incredibly powerful and bright straight from turn on. And due to how long they've been around, they're also relatively affordable when compared to high-end LEDs, such as an RE Sky panel. However, this is somewhat changing as LED cinema technology becomes more consumer-based. And there's now a broad range of quality at a broad range of price points. Finally, tungstens also produce minimal color temperature change when dimmed. And unlike HMIs, they don't use toxic chemicals such as mercury and don't have a risk of exploding. But with these benefits do come some obvious disadvantages. Tungstens get incredibly hot. And because of this, they can be dangerous on set and they should never be left unattended. Generally, they tend to cost more to run than LEDs and are much larger and heavier to rig and move around. Their bulbs are also prone to weakening, cracking and blowing over their life cycle. And this can be expensive to replace and they therefore need to be treated carefully. 
they also have a longer cooldown period, which means you have to plan this into your de-rig time when finishing a day's shoot or when moving to a new location. Because of this, tungstens are more difficult to work with in confined spaces or as a solo shooter or when you're working on a smaller production team. Finally, our tungsten lights are fixed at a color temperature of 3200, meaning they can't match the typical daylight Kelvin of 5600 without the correct strength of CTB gel being applied. This adds an additional step in the setup process, and it requires the operator to have a good understanding of the gel intensity ranges. So when it comes to picking your lights, think about the story you're trying to tell, the location you're going to shoot in, the feel you want from the image and the size of your production crew. Thanks for watching. Hopefully this has been helpful. If you have any questions regarding this video, please don't hesitate to come and see any of the technicians in the media center. Until next time, keep shooting, keep being creative, and we'll see you soon.